Hey, welcome back. In this example, we are going to find the resultant of these two forces, Fa and Fb. And we have this sort of a cutout of a structural system, of structural elements. So we have a structural element right here and right here, and they are bolted or welded onto this plate right here, which we can just assume is horizontal this way. So these two structural uh, members right here are subject to these compressive forces Fa and Fb and they have magnitudes of 10 kilonewtons and 15 kilonewtons respectively. Now Fa makes an angle or the structural element uh, makes an angle of 40 degrees from this vertical line and this element right here makes an angle of 20 degrees. Now the question is asking uh, us to determine the resultant forces magnitude and direction. Now, there is one very important detail in the problem statement, and it is this last part of the sentence right here, which says, in which each force's line of action meets at a single point at the base. So what is line of action? Well, the line of action is just the line in which certain forces are passing through, are parallel through. So for an example, we have this F B force here, its line of action is going to be along this structural member. And then for uh, force A, its line of action is going to be along this structural member. And the point that they're going to meet at is right there. And so that's what it means by saying a single point at the base. So these two lines of action meet right there, and we can just call that point P. And point P is also going to be where our resultant force is acting once we, you know, figure out what the resultant force's magnitude and direction is. So the very first thing I would like to do is I want to take this diagram and I want to draw a free body diagram that also represents that single point in which these two forces line of actions are passing through or are meeting at. So down here, uh, what we can do is we can draw force A and force B. So force A is going to be acting uh, something, something like this. And force B is going to act something like this. Now this is force A and then this is force B. Now if I drew the uh, vertical line uh, right here, again, this is 20 degrees and this right here is 40 degrees. So you also notice that I drew force B's vector a little bit longer than force A, and that's because force B has a magnitude of 15, and force A has a magnitude of 10. So force B in this case is actually 50% higher than the magnitude of force A. And so that's why this vector right here is longer than this vector. And of course, these two forces meet at this point right here called point P. That's where the lines of action intersect for both forces. Now, knowing this, the next step is to take this free body diagram and add the two vectors together so that we can form a triangle which is comprised of these two forces plus the resultant force. So I'll go ahead and copy this diagram off to the right just like that and what i'm going to do is well first i'm going to add fa plus fb so i'm going to take the tail of b fb and i'm going to add it to the tip of f of a so i can take this f of b vector and add it to the tip of f a and just to clean things up i'll get rid of these angles uh, for now and so now I can draw the resultant vector, which is going from the tail of A, and it's going to go to the tip of B, which is right here. So this is going to be our resultant vector. Okay, great. So now we have this triangle and we can start doing stuff with it. We can fill in some of the unknown angles and start solving for some of the sides. In this case, we're going to solve for the magnitude of R. And in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and relabel some of these angles. So if you remember, this angle right here is going to be 40 degrees. And if I extended this vertical line down this way, I also know that this angle right here is 20 degrees. Well, why is that? Well, again, we have this vertical line right here, and then this force vector is making an angle of 20 degrees. So if I were to draw that same vertical here, that 20 degrees would be this angle right here. 
Now I've also drawn this line, which is parallel to this line. And so if that first interior angle is 20 degrees, then that means this angle right here is also going to be 20 degrees. So this angle and this angle from the vertical here is both 20 degrees. Okay, awesome. So now let's go into the triangle and the top corner here I will call angle alpha. Uh, this angle right here where the two vectors meet, I'll just call beta. And then finally, this angle right here, I'll call gamma. Now, immediately you might be able to see that we could solve for beta. And so that's what we'll do first. We know that this is a straight line right here. So this angle right here is 180 degrees. So what I can do is I could say that 180 degrees is equal to 40 degrees plus beta plus 20 degrees. Now, if I just solve for beta here, beta is equal to 120 degrees. Okay, awesome. So that gives us beta. Well, what can we do next? Well, remember, we have the magnitudes of Fa and Fb. So this side right here is 10 kilonewtons, and this side right here is 15 kilonewtons. What I think we could do is we could use the law of sines to figure out the magnitude of R since we know its opposite corner, beta. So let's go ahead and do that. I can start off by saying R squared, the magnitude of R, is equal to the magnitude of Fa squared plus F b squared minus 2 times f of a times f b times cosine of the angle between them, which is beta. Now, r squared is unknown, so that's equal to f of a, which is 10 kilonewtons. And that's squared plus f b, which is 15 kilonewtons, and that's squared minus 2 times 10 kilonewtons times 15 kilonewtons times cosine of beta, which was 120 degrees. So now, if we just plug this in and solve for r, we get r has a magnitude of 21.7945 kilonewtons. Okay, awesome. So that gives us the magnitude of r, and that's half the problem. Now, the other half of the problem is figuring out the direction of r or the orientation of r. And so again, with orientation, you can do orientation all sorts of way. You can specify that this is the horizontal and it makes some angle right here. Or we could say that, you know, this is the vertical and it makes some angle right there. Or anything else. If you had this horizontal, you could calculate this angle. It doesn't matter. As long as you specify that R is acting in a particular orientation with a certain angle, that is good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solve, if we zoomed into this triangle, what I'm going to do is here's the vertical uh, line right here. I'm going to solve for this angle, uh, and I'll just specify that R is acting in an orientation relative to this vertical line. So I want to start off by drawing this vertical line so we have a reference point. And just for the heck of it, we could just draw the uh, horizontal line right here. And again, this and this make a 90 degree angle. And so the angle that I wanna solve for is going to be this angle right here, which I can just call delta. Now, we know from the original problem statement that F of A, the force F of A, which is this force right here, makes an angle of 40 degrees from this vertical line. Now, this vertical line and this vertical, the green line that we just drew, those two lines are parallel. And the traversal, which goes through those two lines, in this case is the line of action of F of A, these two sides will make alternate interior angles. So if this is 40 degrees right here, we know that this right here is 40 degrees. So to just make it a little bit clearer, the vertical line right here and the force vector here makes an angle of 40 degrees. So I can label that here, and things are going to get a little messy, so I'll do this in a different color. I guess we could do it in pink. I could say that this angle and uh, this thing right here, so this angle right here, this is 40 degrees. So after labeling this, you could see that delta, which is this angle right here, is going to be 40 degrees minus this alpha angle. And I can write that relationship here. I could say that delta is simply 40 degrees minus angle alpha. So this equation right here 
Obviously, there are two unknowns. Obviously, we need to solve for alpha first in order to get delta. And so that's what we'll do. We'll solve for this angle alpha right here. And once we know alpha, we can plug it into this equation and we could figure out what delta is. And that's the last part of figuring out the resultant vector. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, if I zoom out just a little bit, again, this is a triangle and we could use the law of sines or the law of cosines to figure out unknown variables for those triangles. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the law of sines to figure out angle alpha because we already know the side that's opposite to that corner, that's f of b, and f of b has a magnitude of 15 kilonewtons. We know or this angle alpha is unknown, and then we could use another side and corner to figure out what angle alpha needs to be. So I can do the law of sines down here. I could say that sine of alpha over its opposite side, which is f of b, so f of b, that's just the magnitude of f of b, that's equal to sine of beta over the resultant magnitude, and that's equal to sine of gamma over its opposite side, which is f of a. Now, some of these variables are already known, and so this relationship becomes sine of alpha, which is unknown, over f of b, which is 15 kilonewtons. And that's equal to sine of beta. Well, sine of beta was 120 degrees, or beta was 120 degrees, uh, divided by the magnitude of the resultant. And so we figure that out over here. It's 21.7945 kilonewtons. And this is equal to sine of gamma, which is also unknown, over the magnitude of f of a, which is 10 kilonewtons. Now, we really didn't need this third term because we're not actually solving for gamma, but I just wrote the whole thing, you know, for completion. What we're really looking at is these two terms right here because in this equation, we only have one unknown, which is alpha. And of course, alpha is what we're trying to solve for. So if we just looked at these two terms and set them equal to one another and solved for alpha, we would get a value of alpha as... 36.5868 degrees. Okay, so we figured out what alpha is, but that's not how the resultant factor is acting. Alpha, again, was just this angle right here. And we came up with a relationship between alpha and delta right here. We took this 40 degrees and we subtracted alpha from it to get this delta and delta is the angle that this resultant force, R, makes with this vertical line. So down here, I could say that delta is equal to 40 degrees minus this 36.5868 degrees. And this gives us a value of about 3.41 degrees. Okay, awesome. So we figured out delta. So our final answer, our final answer, which is this resultant force R. The resultant force of these two compressive forces, F of A and F of B, is going to be equal to 21.7945 kilonewtons, and it's acting at an angle of 3.41 degrees from this vertical line. So I can just draw a little diagram like that and say this angle right here is 3.41 degrees. So there we go. That is the resultant force of these two force vectors, f of a and f of b.